Hello racing fans, this is NASCAR Racing Fan 2015 back with another 2019 NASCAR Silly Season Analysis. And this one includes the recent changes at JTG Doherty Racing and its number 47 race team. Much like Furniture Row Racing, JTG started out in the NASCAR Xfinity Series and slowly climbed the ladder to stability and reached the NASCAR Cup Series level in 2009. And from that season until 2010, this team had boatloads of potential with Marco Sambros behind the wheel. In 2009, with a technical alliance with Michael Waltrip Racing, Marco Ambrose netted an impressive four top five seven top 10 finishes, an average finish of 19th, and an 18th place points finish. The thing that impressed me the most was during the 2009 Sharpie 500, a race that I attended firsthand. Marco Sambros and JTG Doherty Racing had a very strong race car all night and wheeled it to an impressive third place finish at the last great Coliseum. Certainly, the 2009 NASCAR Cup Series season for the team was a solid one for sure and they earned that delicious little Debbie treat for their performance during the season. In 2010, however, the race team completely fell apart and all of the positives from last season were wiped away with a Clorox disinfected wet wipe. During the 2010 season, Marcos Ambrose and JTG Doherty Racing earned only two top fives, five top ten finishes, an average finish of 23rd, and a final points finish of 26th with eight DNFs. As a result, Marcos Ambrose left the race team to drive for Richard Petty Motorsports. Also, not to mention Marcos Ambrose's first career win slipping away after he stopped on the racetrack at Sonoma as he ultimately was restarted back in seventh and lost to Jimmy Johnson. In 2011, the team led by Tad Geschichter and Brad Doherty decided to hire 2000 NASCAR Cup Series champion Bobby Labonte to the number 47 Bush's Big Beans Toyota Camry. Essentially, this move was like receiving a stale bag of cheeses as you get a Cup Series champion behind the wheel, but he is past his former glory and is easily on the brutal decline of his career. As a result, Bobby Labonte's tenure at JTG Doherty Racing was an absolute disaster. From 2011 to 2013, he netted just one top five, two top ten finishes, an average finish of around 25th, and his best points finish was in 2012 when he placed 23rd in the season standings. The only highlight was something done off the track, as Bobby Labonte won the 2012 NASCAR fan vote and transferred into the All-Star Race. The team was going backwards in terms of performance instead of progressing into future contenders. In 2014, JTG Doherty Racing decided to scrub itself well with some downy soap and start fresh and new. The team picked up a key free agent that would change the course of history. AJ Allmendinger was announced as the brand new driver for the number 47 team, and they also decided to switch manufacturers from Toyota to Chevrolet. During that season, it was a career year for both the driver and the race team. As an expert road course racer, AJ Omeninger drove his number 47 Scott's product Chevrolet door to door with Marcos Ambrose and was able to win the Cheese It 355. This race was not only AJ Omeninger's first career NASCAR Cup Series win, but it was the first win for JTG as an organization. As a result, they qualified for the chase that year and were just two points away from advancing to the round of 12. AJ Allmendinger and JTG's final statistics for the season were really good as he netted one win, two top fives, five top 10 finishes, and placed a respectable 13th place in the standings. In addition, 
AJ Allmendinger was signed to a six-year contract that would keep him behind the wheel of the number 47 Chevrolet until 2020. The momentum this race team brought in 2015 was hotter than a Kingsford charcoal grill, and certainly there was nowhere to look but up. Race, we won't screw up, Jerry! Diving to the from 2015 to 2018, however, the team has been cold as a tube of Briar's ice cream, and they have not steadily built into a playoff contender that Furniture Row Racing was able to accomplish during that time frame. The only memorable season for the 4017 and AJ Allmendinger was 2016, where the team netted two top fives, nine top ten finishes, and they finished the season 19th in points, better than all three routes. Fenway Racing Fords. Some other notable accomplishments during that time period was an impressive finish in the 2017 Daytona 500 as well as a win in the third segment of the 2018 NASCAR All-Star Open. Later that night, A.J. Allmendinger wheeled that race car so hard you would think it was fueled with a bottle of Louisiana hot sauce. Starting shotgun on the field, he was fairly competitive throughout the event and he netted a solid 8th place finish. As a result of the poor performance on the track, it was announced on September 25th, 2018 by JTG Doherty Racing that A.J. Allmendinger would leave at season's end as he was released from his contract early. His stats from 2014 to 2017, as well as the first 32 races of 2018, look like this. One win, six top fives, 27 top 10 finishes, and he had an average finish of around 20th place. While he never improved and didn't build up to a championship contender, these stats are fairly respectable, especially driving ECR equipment on a smaller team. In addition, he would always take the blame for his personal mistakes, such as Watkins Glen in 2016 and Sonoma last June, which is a great quality to respect and admire within a driver. So the bottom line, if A.J. Allmendinger cannot find a ride in NASCAR for 2019, he certainly had a decent run within the sport and should be remembered more for his driving style and his personality than the crashes and constant failures on the track. For JTG Doherty Racing, however, the show must go on, and it was announced on Friday, September 28th at the Charlotte Motor Speedway that Ryan Priest would drive the number 47 Kroger Clickless Chevrolet Camaro for the team in 2019. The move also includes a technical partnership between the race team and Hendrick Motorsports, and they will now utilize their engine department. During his 16 starts with Joe Gibbs Racing from 2017 to 2018, his stats have been fairly impressive. He has earned two wins, 10 top fives, 12 top 10 finishes, 218 laps led, and has an average finish of around 10th. Meanwhile, Brandon Jones, who is driving a full-time campaign for the same organization, has netted zero wins, two top fives, 14 top 10 finishes, 169 laps led this season, and was eliminated from the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs in the round of 12. With that said, however, his father, J.R. Jones, is the CEO of Ream, and as a result, we get to watch him tear up JGR equipment on the track. No, it's not the good kind, like a generational talent like Ryan Priest brings to the table. So in 2018, Ryan Priest decided his best career option was to move to JTG into the 47 ride and compete full-time in the NASCAR Cup Series. Realistically, the only other options available in NASCAR were the one car at Junior Motorsports and possibly the 42 at Chip Ganassi Racing. Those were really the only two cars available at a competitive level to show his talents, and those are ultimately going to Noah Gregson and likely Ross Chastain. But with the lack of sponsors, however, this was the right move to solidify a position in the series 
And now we get to see what this transcended talent, one that could be the greatest thing since sliced Sara Lee bread can accomplish in the NASCAR Cup Series. So my expectations for Ryan Priest are very similar to Matt Di Benedetto, which was covered last weekend. A great stepping stone season would result in Priest getting one to two top fives, seven to eight top 10 finishes, and to be in the conversation to make the 2019 NASCAR playoffs. In addition, hopefully Priest gets a few key chances to win a few races, especially with the new 2019 rules package limiting horsepower and bunching the powerhouse organizations and smaller teams closer together. You never know, Ryan Priest has shown what he is capable of doing in the Whelan Modified Series and in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, running only a fraction of the schedule. And it would not surprise me if he plays upset early in the going and wins his first NASCAR Cup Series race. In addition, winning the 2019 NASCAR Rookie of the Year would also make the season for sure. While Daniel Hemrick is bringing his consistency to Richard Childress Racing and the 31 team, Ryan Priest brings something unique to the table, a winning edge. Unlike Daniel Hemrick, who is currently 0 for 113 in NASCAR-sanctioned Xfinity and Truck Series events, Ryan Priest has showered his race team with natural light in victory lane. I think this edge could come into play, especially if JTG can build around Priest and consistently run top 20 most weekends. So the bottom line, this move goes together like an Oscar Mayer bologna sandwich with Hellman's mayo. Pairing a talented top prospect in NASCAR with JTG Doherty Racing, a team on the rise should be a recipe for success within the sport. In addition, they have the power of the Energizer Bunny under the hood with Hendrick Motorsports engines, which is a major step forward from the mediocre ECR equipped power they've been running for the last five seasons. This is by far the healthy choice for Team Kroger Clicklist JTG Doherty Racing, and hopefully Ryan Priest and Chris Buescher have breakout seasons in the NASCAR Cup Series. So anyways, this is NASCAR Racing Fan 2015 signing out, and just remember, life's a beach, and then you drive. Is this what you're looking for? Is that a half inch? No, Chris. It's a Tide ad. <laughs>